and applications. In this video lesson we'll be adding vectors algebraically and for that we'll be applying the addition of vectors to uses in navigation. However, the same mathematical techniques could be used in forces and in other applications as well. These applications will be in moving on the ground by walking or running. Another way we'll be looking at is navigating on water like a ship, boat, or someone swimming. And also flying applications. Our first problem, a boat is heading directly across a river at 30 miles per hour. There is a current flowing downriver at 5 miles per hour. What is the boat's resultant velocity vector? One thing that's helpful with vector problems is a diagram to orient the situation we're talking about. I don't think I could do this very well without a drawing. Here's the river with a boat. What we are given in this problem are the two component vectors, one for the boat provided motion and one for the motion provided by the current of the river. What is needed for a vector? Well, magnitude and direction. We'll say that the boat heading vectors magnitude is 30 miles per hour and the direction of that vector is eastward. And as for the river current vector, we have a magnitude of 5 miles per hour and a direction of south. That would be at a right angle to the boat heading vector. Graphically, the composite of the two vectors is the direct line between the start or tail of the boat heading vector to the tip of the river current vector. Since these two component vectors are at right angles to each other, we can create our resultant velocity vector using the Pythagorean theorem. And here's the input on our calculator. The square root of quantity 30 squared plus 5 squared. We press enter and get 30.4 miles per hour around to the nearest tenth. So that's the magnitude of the resultant vector, 30.4 miles per hour. As far as direction, we have an opposite over adjacent side situation which requires the tangent trigonometric ratio. Here it is entering our calculator, the inverse tangent of negative 5 over 30. It's negative 5 because the opposite side of the angle goes down from the horizontal. And pressing enter, we get an angle of about negative 9.5 degrees, rounded to the nearest tenth of a degree. Since we have a negative 9.5 degrees, we call this 9.5 degrees south of east. So I box in these results as our answers. 30.4 miles per hour at 9.5 degrees south of east. Next problem, a marathon runner runs 16 miles due north, then 10 miles due west. What is her displacement? As always, a sketch of the situation is helpful, if not absolutely necessary. Here the two component vectors are drawn, the one going 16 miles north and the other going 10 miles to the west at right angles to the first vector. This word displacement, what does this word mean? In this context, the displacement is the direct distance from start to finish. Sometimes you'll hear someone say, as the crow flies. And this distance can be represented by a vector, in this case the purple arrow from the start to the finish. The length or magnitude and the direction of this arrow define the vector. To find the distance, we can do as we did last time, use the Pythagorean theorem since the two component vectors form a right angle to one another. And here's the square root of quantity 16 squares plus 10 squared in the calculator. Press enter. We get a displacement of 18.87 miles rounded to the nearest hundredth of a mile. And we can label the distance on the composite resultant vector accordingly. Now we can find the direction of the resultant vector. We will label the angle between the starting and composite vectors as theta. We know that the tangent of this angle is opposite over adjacent, or 10 over 16. Therefore, the angle theta equals the inverse tangent of 10 over 16. And here it is entered in the calculator, the inverse tangent of 10 over 16, which we can be reduced to 5 eighths instead of 10 over 16. Press enter. We get theta equal to 32.005 degrees, which is 32.01 degrees rounded to the nearest hundredth of a degree. And what is this direction? It's 32.001 degrees west of north. So to summarize, the magnitude is 18.87 miles and the direction is 32.01 degrees west of north. And we box in, the answer is correct. Next problem, an airplane flying at its top speed of 500 miles per hour headed due south is blown off course 
by a 75 mile per hour wind blowing, blowing due west. After one hour of flight, how far is the airplane from its starting point and at what angle from due south is that airplane? I invite the viewer to pause the video lesson and work out this problem, then restart the video to see if you got this one right. Here's a drawing of the situation with the 500 mile per hour vector going south and the 75 mile per hour vector going west. Here's the composite vector drawn, and here are the magnitude and direction as found out in our calculator. So for this situation, our composite or resultant vector's magnitude is about 505.6 miles per hour and its direction 8.53 degrees west of south, which we box in as our correct answer. In the first three problems in this video lesson, the component vectors being added were at right angles to each other. And consequently, the first step in finding the magnitude of this vector addition would be to apply the Pythagorean theorem. In the case of this problem, the square root of quantity 16 squared plus 10 squared. And then the direction was found by taking the inverse tangent of the opposite over adjacent sides of the right triangle, in this case the inverse tangent of 10 over 16. But we need to ask the question, what if the vectors being added are not at right angles to each other? What can we do then since the Pythagorean theorem will be insufficient? Here's an example of a situation where the vectors are not at right angles to each other. These last three problems in this video lesson will work out this situation where we do not have a right angle. Here's a drawing of the situation. We have the 45 mile per hour vector going north and the wind vector blowing from the northwest, which it will have to be to blow 45 degrees south of east. And here is the resultant vector in purple. We can see from the drawing that the resultant vector will be something east of north, and if we had drawn these components vectors fairly accurately, we could have gotten close to the answer. But algebraically, we could get a very exact answer only allowing for the rounding of irrational numbers. How, may you ask? Fortunately, we have the law of cosines which applies to angles other than 90 degrees. The law of cosines is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine angle c. Here's the labeling of the sides and angles of our triangle. Our glider vector of magnitude 45 miles per hour is side A. The wind vector with a magnitude of 10 miles per hour is side B. And the angle between them, angle C, of 45 degrees. We need to find side C opposite angle C. That will be the magnitude of the resultant vector. And here are all the values entered into our law of cosines formula. And therefore C is the square root of quantity 45 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 45 times 10 times the cosine of 45 degrees. And here are the values entered into our calculator. Press enter. We get about 38.6 miles per hour, which makes sense since the glider is bucking a headwind. But now we'll write out 38.5824299 since we'll need this number to find the direction of, this, of the resultant vector. And so uh, don't round until you're done is what we're saying here. Next, we need to find angle B, which will be the direction of a velocity vector. And to find angle B, we can use the law of sines. And it's the sine of angle B over the side B equals the sine of angle C over side C. So we have sine of angle B over 10 equals the sine of 45 degrees over 38.5824299. And multiplying by 10 and taking the inverse, we get angle B equal to the inverse sine of 10 times the sine of 45 degrees over 38.5824299. And here is the calculation set up and made in the calculator. Angle B is about 10.6 degrees east of north. So in summary, we say that this vector has a magnitude of 38.6 miles per hour in a direction of 10.6 degrees east of north, which we box in as our correct answer. Here's another situation. A river boat is crossing the Mississippi River at 12 miles per hour heading due west. The current in the river is 5 miles per hour in a direction 55 degrees south of west. What is the resulting velocity of the river boat? Here's the Mississippi River with our river boat. And here the river boat heading vector of 12 
miles per hour west and the river current vector of 5 miles per hour 55 degrees south of west are drawn in. The river boat heading vector is 12 miles per hour to the west and the river current vector is 5 miles per hour to the south of west. And here's where the 55 degree angle is located. Note that this angle is not inside the triangle but the 55 degrees is outside the triangle. And this means that the angle inside the triangle would be uh, would be a supplementary angle situation where 180 degrees minus 55 degrees would be 125 degrees inside that triangle. Now to unclutter the drawing we just place the number with the units on the drawing. And here's the composite vector that we'll need to evaluate in purple. Now we'll label the sides and the angle. The river current vector is side A, the river boat heading vector is side B, the resulting the resultant velocity vector is side C and the interior angle of 125 degrees is angle C and the angle opposite side A is labeled angle A. Now we bring out our law of cosine C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine angle C. Note that this is just like the Pythagorean theorem with the minus 2AB cosine C being the adjustment for an angle different than 90 degrees. And here's the law of cosines with all the numbers substituted. And here's the version having taken the square root of both sides of the equation to solve for c. And here's the right side of the equation entered in our calculator. Press enter. We get about 15.4 miles per hour for our velocity vector which we'll label in our drawing. Next we'll need to find the direction which is angle a. We can again using the law of sines for that. And here's the law of sines apply. We have the sine of angle A over 5 equals the sine of 125 degrees over 15.421711. And solving for angle A by multiplying by 5 and taking the inverse sine operation, we get angle A equals the inverse sine of 5 times the sine of 125 degrees over 15.421711. And here are the numbers to get angle A entered into the calculator. Press enter. We get angle A equal to 15.4 degrees and the direction will be south of west. And we label our drawing accordingly. So for this velocity vector its magnitude is about 15.4 miles per hour and its direction 15.4 degrees south of west. Which we box in as our correct answer. Here's our last situation we'll look at today. A long distance swimmer starts out swimming at a steady 2 mile per hour rate in a due south direction. A 4 mile per hour current is flowing at 10 degrees north of east. What is the swimmer's resultant velocity? Pause the video lesson, work out the problem, then restart to see if you got it right. Here's a drawing of the swimmer and the current vectors placed together. And here's the resultant vector in purple. Angle C is 80 degrees and using the law of cosine side C is the square root of quantity 2 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 2 times 4 times the cosine of 80 degrees. And here it is placed in the calculator. We press enter and get about 4.15 as the magnitude of our velocity vector. And we so label the resultant velocity vector in our drawing. And we label the remainder of the sides and the angle B that we'll be solving for using the law of sines. And here's the law of sines worked out to solve for angle B. We have the sine of angle B over 4 equals the sine of 80 degrees over 4.1498951. And solving for angle B, we get angle B equals the inverse sine of 4 times the sine of 80 degrees over 4.1498951. And here's the calculation entered into the calculator. Press enter. We get 71.7 degrees east of south. And if we subtract from 90 degrees, we get this, 18.3 degrees south of east. Either way adequately describes the direction. Some people prefer using the one, in like in this case, 18.3 degrees, which is a smaller number to describe the direction. So this is the resultant vector's magnitude and direction. A magnitude of 4.15 miles per hour with a direction of 18.3 degrees south of east which we box in as our correct answer. 
In this video lesson emphasizing navigation problems, we worked on two types of navigation problems. First, we did three problems like this one, where the vectors intersect at a right angle to each other. For these situations, we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the vector and the inverse tangent to find the angle of direction. And we also had three problems with this type of situation where the vectors do not intersect at a right angle to each other. And we, for this, had to use the law of cosines to find the magnitude and the law of sines to find the direction. This has been Adding Vectors Algebraically Navigation Applications. Thanks for viewing.